This is a recording. Welcome to the Locked Tome, the spooky sister channel to The Open Book. To kick off this horror-loving space, I am repurposing some of my older videos, originally published to TOB, which were admittedly a little too horror-centric in nature. We're splitting vibes and splitting skulls over here, so if anything in this video feels a little odd in the editing, that's why. I can't wait to get the channel fully up and running, thanks for stopping by, and please stick around if you also enjoy all things horror, and if you'd prefer cozy vibes, I will kindly direct you to the open book channel instead, where over there I have cookies. End of recording. Hello humans, my name is and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Snowman, the movie, not the book. So I'm assuming almost all of you have heard of The Snowman movie. It was released in 2017, directed by Thomas Alfredson, and starring Michael Fassbender and Rebecca Ferguson. It quickly blew up on social media and gained an interesting infamy. The Snowman has one of the lowest ratings on Rotten Tomato I have ever seen. It got a 7% by critics and 18% by audiences. For this one, I'm going to agree with audiences at 18% simply because to rate something under 10%, a part of me feels like the entire thing would have to be out of focus or have blown out audio and terrible CGI spaghetti monster in the background at all times. I don't know, it's just really harsh to give it a 7. I think a lot of people knew at the time of the movie's release was that it was based on a fairly well-respected book, which probably accounted for a harsher reception over its lackluster performance. What a lot of people might not know, however, is that The Snowman is just one of many in a series of crime novels written by Joe Esbo. In the series of crime novels featuring Harry Hole, this one happens to be number seven. And no, I will not be making jokes about his name, it kind of speaks for itself, and I'm sure everyone else has already done it. And The Snowman as a novel in the series installments has a solid four-star rating on Goodreads. I haven't personally read the book, it got left behind on my bookshelf after the move, but I will be talking about the movie in length and where it seems the narrative from the novel got lost in translation. Here's a spoiler-free summary if you don't know what The Snowman is about, and then I'm diving into specifics of the film. The Snowman follows a supposedly renowned detective named Harry Hole, who is investigating the disappearance and murders of women in the Oslo area. Harry teams up with a young detective named Katrine, who seems to have more involvement in the situation than she initially lets on. The serial killer has a thing for snowmen and leave them as a calling card to taunt his pursuers at the scenes of crimes. And that's all I can give you. Time for spoilers. Before I grow critical, I'd like to say that there were some very interesting shots in the movie. Right at the start, there's a car chase scene that utilizes the natural architecture of the area to great effect. The camera follows the car over a winding bridge, and it's such an interesting angle and flow, I sat there wondering whether it was real or not. Did they CG the whole thing, or is this just a really cool fucking bridge? Throughout the movie, there is a lot of emphasis on camera angles which set up scenes to draw focus to specific objects, but most of the time that setup gets lost in the narrative, though. When introduced to the protagonist, Harry Hole, he's cast as the classic alcoholic cop. Good guy who's an alcoholic, but just... Y you know, you know them. He wakes up drunk on a bench in the middle of winter. Like, you gotta be pretty disconnected and letting your life fall apart for that shit to happen. His apartment, for that matter, is so riddled with black mold that it's basically the color of the walls. Yet, we're told by his co-workers once he gets to his place of business that Harry is actually a pretty famous detective. He's one of the greats. But in a lot of instances throughout the movie, we are told this without being shown. And knowing now that this movie is an adaptation of an installment of a series of books about Harry, I can begin to understand why. Deciding to make the seventh of the crime novels, there isn't room for viewers to get to know the pre-developed character. We don't get to know why he's such an alcoholic or how he became a renowned detective. We don't have time to be shown it convincingly, so there's nothing to do but add a few sentences about it here and there. I am not defending the movie for so casually butchering the protagonist of a well-respected series. I'm just saying I can see where things started to get a little fucky. There was a world to introduce, and I guess there was no space to do it. This is also reflected in the film's introduction of the world's technology. As soon as Harry gets to work and shakes off his probable hangover, viewers get a sort of cop tech seminar thrown in their face, where a lady in a conference room that Harry is near, slash, in, 
is lecturing a bunch of other cops on how to properly use their tablets. Harry's sidekick for the movie prominently has this tablet technology with her and uses it to a point of being overdone. This thing can take videos for spying or for just general statements from victims. It can catalog fingerprints and access their database. Pretty high tech for such a simple serial killer hunt. And I can't say it played much of a role in the capture of the killer because the main characters just run around digging up old cases which are printed in paper for us, the viewers, consumption, and physical one-on-one -on -one interrogations. There was also a matter of their glowing pins that everyone at a fundraiser was wearing. They looked pretty techy. They probably had a function, but we never got to find out. The tech in the movie feels like an added unnecessary detail when it should have been an instrumental factor in the movie's plot progression. As with all movies, the acting has to be addressed. I was very disappointed in Michael Fassbender's performance because I know how good he can be. A large part of not liking his acting, or anyone else's for that matter, can be attributed to the complete lack of character development that we get. I don't understand Harry Hole. Therefore, I don't like and cannot relate to him. A lot of the movie, it felt like they were telling Michael to remain expressionless. He reacted very little in some situations, which he definitely should have been reacting to. He barely lifts a finger or says a word when his ex tries hopping on his dick. Like, what? But lastly, what got the snowman such bad reviews was its complete lack of plot consistency. Looking up a bit more about the movie for this video, I learned that the director admitted to not filming 10 to 15% of the film that was intended so the lack of fluidity can be explained by the fact some clues were just never introduced. Going from one scene to another, following Harry or Katrine, I always felt like I was missing something. Some piece that would bring what I just saw and what I'm currently seeing together. That's how choppy and convoluted the movie presentation was. You shouldn't constantly have to be asking yourself, okay, but why did we arrive at this? This is one of those situations where if I try explaining some of the instances to someone who has not watched it, I will just sound crazy. So here's an easy example. A woman is killed and her head is missing. In the next cut, Harry is wading through chest high snow with obvious intent to some cement industrial building, lets himself in through a floor grate leading in from the outside. And then he looks down into a definable chasm in the building that is nothing more than snowy rock to find the head of the woman on a snowman's body. Several questions arise. Why is Harry alone? How did he find this building? What even is this fucking building? How in the right heck did he seem so confident the head would be there? How did the serial killer get the head down there in the first place without extreme scaling technology? When they bring the teams in afterwards, they've got like shit hooked all over the place. They're professionals. It's dangerous. How did the how? The movie is constructed out of loosely tied together events and there are no properly explained clues to fit them together. Now that I'm explaining all of this, maybe the snowman did deserve a 7%, but I still feel like that's still, it's just too harsh. <laughs> anyway, the last shot of the movie focuses on Harry Hole after the whole snowman ordeal, sitting in a cop meeting, and we fade to black with the promise that he is taking on another gruesome case. This, I think, exemplifies everything that was lost in translation from the books to the movie adaptation. For viewers, this was a poorly constructed one-off detective movie, but it keeps an ending as would that of a book in a series. It's giving the promise of another adventure to come from Harry that is never actually going to be filmed, hopefully, and will feature a protagonist we never got to know well enough in the first place because the novel information missing from the six books beforehand were not in this movie. It just doesn't translate. It does not work. So in the end, I do not suggest watching this movie. <laughs> read the book, maybe. It's got good reviews. I will eventually read the book as well. If you have any gripes about the Snowman movie, be sure to put it in the comments below. And if you have read the book and it is better, please let me know so I don't just spin infinitely into the void. My name is and I make video and literary content videos. I put them out every Tuesday, and if you like my content, please subscribe and stay tuned. I will see you in the next video.